listening to The Cooler Ring, a podcast made for manufacturing marketers. Here are Carmen Perry and Jeff White. Welcome to The Cooler Ring, a podcast for manufacturing marketers brought to you by Cooler Partners. My name is Jeff White and joining me today is Carmen Perry. Carmen, how are you doing, sir? I am uh, delighted to be here once again. Uh, how are you doing? I'm doing great. I think, nice. you know, honestly, I think this is the first podcast we've recorded in 2022. Ah, uh, see, it's like, kind of like sausage. Best not to see how it's made, you know. You tell people that now, and then they're going to know. When, but yeah, it, uh, I think it's okay. It, we, yeah, we do kind of rack and stack them sometimes. And sometimes it feels like you're recording almost like an episode or two every hour. And then yeah. other times it seems like you go weeks without. Uh, so yeah, if our, uh, if our radio voice isn't quite where it should be, that's uh, what <laughs> our listeners should know, that we've just yeah. been out of practice. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, just uh, you know, kicking off the uh, Christmas doldrums a month later. Yeah. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> well, look, I'm, I'm looking forward to our guest today. A really interesting story and one I think a lot of manufacturing marketers can relate to. Yeah. Um, it's interesting uh, in in this space and, and, of course, manufacturing being like a massively large vertical. It's not really a vertical at all. There's just many verticals within it. But um, as we look at at manufacturing uh, overall, um, uh, there's a number of marketers, I think, that find themselves in the kind of uh, the same uh, shoes, if you will, as today's guest, uh, in that they maybe are um, uh, the, the first marketing hire or, uh, an, or, or, or just maybe um, uh, you know, one of the few people uh, charged with starting to make marketing a priority in a manufacturer, and it just hasn't typically been the case. So uh, I'm hopeful that today's guest is going to kind of give us some tips and tricks of uh, how our listeners can maybe navigate these waters. Absolutely. So joining us today is Stephen Nee. Stephen is the head of marketing and communications at Klockner Metals. Welcome to the Cooler Ring, Stephen. Thank you. Thank you guys for having me. You, by the way, you guys have a great podcast voice. I, I, I was like now listening. I was like, oh, I do not have a voice for radio or a face <laughs> for film. So like, this is great that I get to partake in this. Well, that's that's honestly why it's a, an audio only podcast, because <laughs> I know I have a face for radio. As well. <laughs> yeah, the audio only helps, doesn't it? I mean, yeah, really, yeah. yeah. No, we can we can Photoshop the hell out of the uh, bio photos, though, you know, <laughs> exactly. make it look pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, Stephen, um, please introduce our listeners to um, uh, to you and, um, and and to the firm. We'd like to just kind of give us a little bit of texture and context before we get started here. Yeah, definitely. Uh, my name is Stephen Nee. I'm uh, the head of communications, uh, head of marketing and communications at Clockner Metals. Uh, I've been with the company for over six years, and so I've been in the past two years in this remote. Role, I've been tasked with essentially all things marketing and what that means to, uh, you know, to me is like, that's everything like from design, development, customer uh, experience, uh, SEO, social media. So, you know, anything with the, you know, like marketing is just so broad. Uh, and so I, I think also one of my uh, desires is to for us to be a marketing first organization and to be mindful of those experiences, um, even internal, like with, with communications and the way we deliver our messaging and follow through our messaging, uh, not only for our customers, but also in our internal employees as well. So Klockner is a uh, essentially uh, in, the, in the history of the company has mostly been a steel distributor. Uh, so basically anyone who needs to buy metals, we got you. Uh, and so, uh, and most recently, you know, we've been trying to make this shift to really explain, you know, we are more than just a, a steel service center. Like we do some fabrication. We also do a lot with a uh, supply chain. And so we really are experts in making sure that, you know, I, I think that's where our strength is, is just really allowing, uh, large OEMs where other uh, of our potential customers to understand that, you know, you need to get metals from point A to point B to point C. And, you know, like your ma manufacturing plants are all across the U.S. We can definitely help you figure out the best route to deliver and we'll even take care of that whole process. So, you know, like for a while we were using the favorite buzzword one-stop shop. And so I'm sure uh, that got killed by uh, everybody else. So we don't use that term anymore. But yeah, that's essentially what we're trying to do and just really help our um, customers 
understand their needs, not only just from a material standpoint, but also throughout the whole supply chain. Really cool. Yeah, it's hard to own one stop shop. <laughs> it is. It yeah. is. Yeah. 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 yeah there's, a, there, there's a corner store near my uh, condo that I think uh, has a kind of one big stop. claim to that, really. Yeah. 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 It, it, yeah they, don't, they don't carry the same kind of metals as Klockner, though. Okay. Yeah. Well, they don't. <laughs> this is true. But it's interesting because, I mean, Klockner is not a small company by any stretch of the imagination, but yet, um, you know, you're relatively new there and your presence there is really indicative of a renewed interest or a newfound interest, maybe not renewed in marketing. And that's, that's, isn't that fascinating? Like when a you know, company gets to the scale uh, of Klockner and, you know, marketing just hasn't been a part of it. Yeah. I mean, marketing in the sense that we define marketing, right. Right. Like, I mean, you know, like I think for them, like they saw the sales reps, or territory managers as their marketing representatives. Like, I mean, even some of them, like when I joined a company, a lot of people had a marketing manager title. And I was like, that is, I, what I do is different than what they do. They're more salespeople. I'm like, you know, marketing. And so I had to really explain that, you know, like what I do is completely different than, you know, I'm not going to direct sales anyway. So I, I think, you know, just that mentality like throughout the history of the organization and i think a lot of manufacturing companies is like oh yeah we're doing marketing because we have a sales guy who showed up at a trade show signed up for a booth and handed out promotional materials and talked to you know potential customers that's marketing uh, and you know and just you know understanding that it's more complex than that and it's not as easy as that and then there's also tons of opportunities to do other things than you know, just show up at someone's door or, phone, you know, call someone. I mean, you know, in our business, we literally, uh, the history of it, and obviously not now, but, you know, they've been deals that were done over uh, dinner on napkins, like someone signed a contract over a napkin, you know, like you hear these like stories and you're like, you know, a handshake deal, like, or just, you know, literally someone driving and so, oh, there's a new building. I should stop in and introduce myself. And that, you know, they saw that as marketing. So. That's where we are. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I think that's it's so much um, the case for, 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 for uh, you know, many, many businesses and, and many industries that um, a very sales first organization um, and, a, and a reputation in a business that was built at a time when uh, that was very much a, a face to face in person endeavor. Um, and, and not to say that sales isn't that now and you don't even have to, you know, think too much about a pandemic or otherwise but um you know the fact of the matter is it's getting you know it, it's 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 more complex now you just drive around and look for the the <laughs> the the newest smokestack on the horizon and then head there and ask if they need something um uh, so i guess a lot of manufacturers are probably you know they're, they're kind of in this same headspace where they're they're uh, looking at it for the first time and and understanding that the the environment is 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 uh, very much more multidimensional and complex, more digital. Um, that digital presence influences uh, sales conversations, uh, on balance to the salespeople, et cetera, et cetera. I guess how uh, and was that the was there? I guess how far along was the company in that realization that sales and marketing has changed? Uh, and they needed to change with it. How, how far along were they when they hired you into that mindset? Or did you have to uh, kind of till some soil in terms of aiding that understanding even? Yeah, I think a little bit of both, right? Like, I mean, for them to be even open-minded to hire a marketer where they weren't fully sure what marketing can do for them, right? I'm, and I'm sure their experience you know, nothing against agencies, but, you know, I'm, I'm sure it was like one-off relationships, mostly with creative agencies, right? So that was their whole framework of what marketing is. Oh, you guys design a brochure for us. You guys design a poster for us, or you guys do some direct mail campaigns or what, you know, what, whatever it was at the time. So, I, you know, I definitely commend the company for recognizing that, oh, there's probably a need here and we're probably lacking in some area, even if not fully sure. But uh, definitely, you know, like I, I do spend a lot of time on my day uh, just, I mean, that's what I was hired to do, to kind of push the company into thinking, oh, can we do this? Should, we should do that. Um, and just constantly pitching, uh, you know, like it, it's funny because, you know, like I'm a marketer, but 
I think it seems like all uh, I sell a lot internally <laughs> and, and, you know, I want the sales guys to be more marketing focused. So, you know, it, it, so we definitely see, you know, this sales alignment, like, you know, sales marketing alignment is huge. And, and, and I think, you know, I, I, I know, at least in my history, in my experience, like, you know, sales and marketing haven't been best friends. Um, and so, you know, they've been very, uh i'm not combative like or anything of that nature but they, you know it's just a natural like oh we do sales we're really important we make the deals happen and and you know you guys are here to support us um and then you, you know marketing is like no we we take lead on some of these initiatives as well and you guys need to help support us in making those leads or and you know and that's the approach that we're trying to take at clockner's is really understanding that okay you know we're not trying to disrupt the sales person from their day to day, right? We're just trying to figure out ways to enhance it to make us more efficient. And just even like understanding what the sales cycles looks like. And if there's anything we can do to shorten it, or just even make sure that the right messaging is appropriate for the cus your customer uh, on what you're trying to actually sell. Like we offer a tons of different types of products and services. So, you know, our world is not the same. Like we have so many different segments. <laughs> um, and so it, it is very complex. Metals is actually overwhelmingly complex. So, you know, it's just me trying to partner with them and understanding their needs and making sure that, you know, we like, here's what we can do for you. And, you know, I have really been taking like a more kind of like an internal agency approach to uh, since I've joined the company. And so, and I, I will say that, you know, that's helped, you know, like they've seen, the work we can produce and they seen the oh oh he is helping us making our lives a lot better easier to close this deal so let's rely on him for this type of support so um so yeah it's just constant education you know like like i said i think you know if you've been working in industry like a lot of these guys have been in the industry for like 20 plus years and they've never they've only done sales like you know they've never had to interact with a marketing person to be like Oh, I need this and that. And so I, I commend ourselves guys actually, because like when I came in, uh, there wasn't like a ton of like even materials for like, you know, like that they were giving to the customers. It was just all conversations and they were able to lock in multi-year con uh, contracts, which is talk. And so that's, that's impressive to me. So, you know, and, and so I think, you know, coming in, I wanted to make sure they understood that I valued them. Um, and their skill sets as well. And I need to understand, like, you know, how did you sell? Like, you know, can we replicate that? Or can we create evergreen content from, like, the things that you use to kind of help grow, you know, your career and help the company grow in revenue as well? That can be such an interesting um, challenge for um, uh, an organization. I, I, I know a number of them that are kind of navigating this right now that they're they have a, a, a number of salespeople that have been with them forever. <laughs> you know, they're 30 year, very like long tenured salespeople. And to your point, they carry so much information in their head that they're closing multi-year deals with conversation. And, and I, I find there's an interesting edge that yes, you can provide marketing support to those folks, but actually in some ways harvesting what they know and turning that into marketing support is in some way almost part of the knowledge transfer that needs to happen because, you know, these folks aren't going to be working there for very much longer. Yeah, you know? uh, yeah. And, you know, and because of the history of the company, right, like, um, or just even history, like I've, I've seen this with other manufacturing companies, is like, you know, their CRMs might not have been as sophisticated, like, you know, they might have had, like, recorded notes on a notebook, you know, that they carry around with them, like, you know, so it wasn't like they had a, a, a suite of digital tools that where they were documenting like, you know, all their knowledge. And so it really is, is it, it, it's challenging to, you know, now. And then I, I think that's the challenge too. It's like, now you're telling that guy who's been doing it successfully for, you know, X amount of years to be like, okay, everything you do on a daily change that, can you log this into Salesforce? <laughs> and, and he's like, whoa, whoa, you know, I've been, this is just extra work for me. Like I've been doing, you know, I've been showing success. Why do I have to change my ways? And so, and, you know, for us to come in and not say that it's a threat, uh, you know, like to not pose it as we're a threat, we're trying to change your everyday workflow. You're, we're trying to make your lives more busy or complicated. Like that's not, you know, that's not beneficial for us. So yeah, I, I definitely, you know, would highlight certain individuals, like even just when I first joined the company and try to like just 
build a relationship with them, pick their brains, and then try to convert that information into like some kind of marketing materials or, or into a content calendar. And so, and just try to ride that wave as much as you can. And, and you know, because they're busy too. So it's just like really, um, yeah, like working within their work schedule. So it's like, you know, we're, we're a team, but you know, like they still have to go and make sales. Like, you know, they don't, you know, like I'm not like their top priority. Um, so, so it is really, you know, also showing the value of that, right? Like showing the values, like, oh, if you take out time of your day, here's what we can produce. And that's what you, you can use to also sell. And then, you know, see that as, a, as an investment, not necessarily as me just taking up, you know, minutes out of your day. Are your digital marketing efforts bringing in too many junk leads? Stop wasting time and distracting your sales team. Account-based marketing can help give your marketing strategy the laser focus on qualified buyers that you need to increase your pipeline velocity, close more deals, and grow your business faster. We've created a sample manufacturing ABM plan to help you get started. Download the sample manufacturing ABM plan at bit.ly slash sample ABM. That's B-I-T dot L-Y slash sample ABM. Has that been, you know, internally when you came into the organization, obviously there are going to be, you know, not necessarily um, confrontations or anything like that, you know, with the, with the sales team, but has... Has that been the biggest headwind getting the uh, the sales team on board with kind of digitizing their approach and and getting them to understand the requirement and why a CRM is valuable? Or have you seen were there other things that you really had to work hard on in order to to bring the company around to uh, to a more modern digital marketing infrastructure? Yeah, I think it's a combination of both, right? Because I mean, like for for marketing, like, you know, when you look at like the stereotype you see in Silicon Valley, like, you know, the CEOs are usually dynamic, you know, like, like Apple, right? Like everyone talks about Steve Jobs and he was, he was just a marketing, like focused individual. And so, you know, you think like, when you join a company, everyone's going to be that gung ho about marketing and like, oh, here's all the great things that we're going to do. And, and it, 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 I don't think like the average person, like, you know, if you're an engineer, like we have a lot of engineers, salespeople, uh, you know, production, quality control, shipping, logistics folks, like when do they ever interact with marketing like ever? And so I, I think I really had to understand that, oh man, I am literally dealing with an audience where there's no communication. It's like, you know, there's no body on the team that's communicate. HR is as close to a communications manager as you have, you know, and then there's no one else who ever deals with marketing. They always deal with sales. They deal with salespeople. They deal with internal salespeople. They deal with external salespeople to, you know, for, for vendors and stuff like that. So yeah, it was definitely um, learning that I had to do a lot of education and give them more exposure to what marketing really is. And it's just more than just me designing you a brochure <laughs> that, that we're going to print and ship out to, you know, X amount of people. And so, you know, that's just, you know, one thing. And so just really trying to explain how it's all connected and this is all marketing it was probably the biggest challenge because yeah, they had no foundation at all. I wonder too, you know, when when you came in over six years ago and looked at this organization and understood the sales led focus of it, how did you decide what to do first? I mean, obviously there's learning for you to understand the company, understand the products, understand the flow, but how did you kind of approach um, putting putting uh you know pixels to paper or or, yeah. or getting getting uh getting organized what did you do first uh i i really took a content uh approach first is like you know we had a website that's you know we've been around since 1906 now granted we haven't had a website since 1906 but it, it's like oh and look at the opportunity like you know just from a just a seo standpoint it was like you know no other uh, no other competitor was investing into like their website or design or look and feel or any of that stuff so i knew that oh my gosh like if we just start like dominating the digital um you know space with with content like we're going to rank easily 
there's not a lot of competition. It's, it, I mean, it's kind of like the wild, wild west, right? Like where it's like, oh, you know, we know there's land out there, and but you know, no one's claimed it so far, so we just have to make it out there. And so, it, it I really, I mean, I think in the first two years, I produced over 70 videos. Um, and so, um, and then you know, we were I hired some writers to do some blogging, some technical blog, you know, blogs like related to metals, anything that where we were like, oh here's a, a natural keyword that might resonate with our customer base. And just, we just started grinding it out. And I, I think, um, and it, it's funny because like until people see a final product, they don't quite grasp what's really happening. And so I think that's what helped. It's like, you know, I had to take a really like MVP approach on everything. Here's what a blog would look like. You know, are you guys comfortable with me talking about this subject in this way? um to externally to our customer um one thing you'll learn about our industry too is like it, it's very fear-based um so they're afraid to make a move to like either offend someone or or oh that's too much information to share for example we have you know customers that would be great if i could say oh um i mean just like any other company please validate that we're legit right and so you know you see on everyone's website i've seen on uh, x well, good morning america or you know uh, on yeah like stuff like that for the life of me like i could not ever like share who we actually do business with and and that's and that's i think that's universal um a lot of manufacturing companies do not like to share who they do business with at all publicly. And so it's like, you know, if we're doing something new, wouldn't X customer, I, I would see that as a, uh, as a, as a win, right? If you're trying to sell X company and you told them that your competitor also works with us and, and does thrives with us, then, you know, that should validate that we're a legit company that you should partner with. But uh, you know, the, the, the organization didn't always, see it that way so so but have you have you changed their mind or, or are you just work, working with what you got yeah i think so because you know like and along the way like i'm grateful for when i first joined the company i reported to the cfo and so one thing that marketing does not do well is that marketing spends money and so you know like the one person you don't want to basically look at you always under a magnifying glass is the CFO who's also worried about like, you know, expenses. And so if you am like, say, Hey, I would like this X amount of money. And he's looking like, no, <laughs> you're like, what are you doing? Um, so, you know, like I, I think um, the organization recognized that. And so, you know, we had um, created also a digital innovations team. And so they actually stuck me under the digital innovations team. I tried to explain to them like marketing is a little bit different than DI, but, but, you know, to each organization their own. Right. And so we'll make the most of it. But, you know, I was really grateful that they put a VP there that really was an advocate for, for marketing an advocate for, Oh, we should try try to do business this way. And so, you know, he obviously helped bridge the gap between, uh, you know, my role and the leaderships and the executive teams and, and the sales team to really understand is like, Oh, the value of this. And so he really supported me even in um, pushing me to get out there, you know, like to make these face-to-face -face visits the way they've been used to doing business with customers, making these face-to-face -face visits and, and just really breaking down like the types of uh, things we can partner together to make this company grow. Um, and so I, I think that helped, you know, like, like having, advocates for you within the organization especially when it's something new and so i i think you know to this day um and you know i um i value our ceo too he's he's you know always trying to be forward thinking uh as the rest of the team like you know like they're they're open-minded it's just that you know when you don't know you don't know and so you know it's not as easy to say yes when you're like i don't know what you're talking about like you know and i'm just telling them say yes to me trust me yeah. <laughs> just hand me hand me a plate of money and let me run with this and you know it's not as obviously in the real world right it's not as easy as like oh well, well what kind of impact and you know show me the business case and so you know so we're, we're doing those things now and we're you know i'm grateful like in my time here it hasn't felt that long but yeah that i've been able to make ways and at least have a voice and, and 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 try to convince them that oh let's let's push even further mm. and how big is the team now uh Stephen? How, how many do you have working with you 
I have a team of three <laughs> now. So, so uh, yeah, we just hired a um, communications manager in December. And so my first hire was uh, right when the pandemic started. I tried to, uh, we hired a um, marketing manager, but uh, basically sh she started in June. So, you know, we've definitely, uh, you know, the thing about small teams is that you have to be scrappy. And like, it is like, you know, and the mindset that we took is really like, we have to be a production house because, and at least in the beginning, right? Like, and then we can get a little bit more strategic um, once we have some foundations and set some, once things have momentum, then you can be a little bit more strategic. So I, you know, I was grateful to, for that first hire because she definitely helped a lot uh, with, you know, producing <laughs> like. Yeah. Project, yeah. I guess, I guess, there's a real wisdom in that, like this notion of people don't really know kind of until they see it in some ways what they're talking about. So that early emphasis that you had on like, we're just going to show you lots of stuff then. We're going to produce and churn stuff out so that you can you know, begin to wear this, try this on a little bit, see what you think. And, and, and beyond that, I love something you said, man, must probably like 10, 15 minutes ago around how uh, wanting the salespeople to see that it was not a waste of their time to speak to you, but rather a worthwhile investment. Like there was some, some way in your voice there, there was some pressure that, to to produce something out of that that was worthwhile and can help that sales process so that they actually look back on their hour or two hours that they spent with you and say, that was worth my time. That's a lovely, I think, little kind of yardstick to to hold up against the, the work in the early days there. I think that's really cool, Stephen. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, and ultimately, right. Like we're all trying to be excellent for the company. Right. And mm. we just have different de definitions of what excellent means. And so, you know, and I, I, at times I think my definition is correct and yours is wrong. So, you know, like it is really about collaboration and understanding, okay, what's your definition of excellence? Okay. Well, let me help you get there because you know i have my own definition so how do we marry the two together to really show excellence in that sense and so um it is like you know but it does like you know like with any organization right it does take a lot of um and i you know give kudos to the team and and the individuals in this organization like they have to be, you also have to be open-minded to to be like oh let me work a different type of way or let me in, let this person in to, you know, help work with me or collaborate with this person to, to make these things happen too, because, you know, you can't produce content unless you have uh you know, like I can't make a, I can't make a video uh, if no one's agreeing to be on film, <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> so yeah, like it definitely is a partnership all the way. And, you know, I, I truly believe that. And I think that's where, um, you know, organizations like, you know, I've been in organizations where they've had challenges with egos and, and, you know, more stricter, uh, you know, oh, I'm a VP, you're a director, you're a manager, you know, like, so these like silos. And so, you know, and obviously any organization this size can have silos, but I, I do think that, you know, collectively, um, if the organization is thinking about, okay, like, this is how we partner and you are helping me, then, you know, it makes it a lot easier to kind of get things done. Yeah. What, what would you say was the thing that, that made people truly begin to appreciate what you were bringing to the table? Like, was, was there an early win or, or something that you did that everybody just kind of went, oh, yeah, all right, I get it. I see it. Yeah, I don't know. Like, me me getting approval from money is a sign that things are working, <laughs> right? Like, so, I, you know, I don't get a good, old, you know, good job. You know, it wasn't it wasn't necessarily like directly, like great job. I mean, you know, from my, obviously my direct, um, you know, VP, like he, he would, he would give me some kind of the sentiments, but you know what, what really I think helped is that when we started producing things and we started like to approach branding in a certain way and design things in a certain way, people started to notice like, you know, externally. And so when, and then they would make comments to our CEO, our COO, to our sales teams, and so they were, you know, other companies would start changing or investing into what we've invested into marketing as well. And, you know, and I think uh, that kind of like helped solidify, oh, he might actually know what he's doing and we can trust him a little bit more and give him, you know, a, you know, give him a little bit more to invest in and to, you know, basically push the company forward.
that kind of external validation, if you will. I'm sure there was because you know I didn't get any internal validation. <laughs> like you know, they didn't communicate. Maybe they didn't want to get me to give a big head. So you know, I, I you know, like so. But yeah, as long as like uh, you know, I'm saying, hey, I want X amount for this campaign, and they said yes. That that's to me a sign that you know something's working for them to say yes to. For sure. Yeah, nobody stopped by with a box of donuts or a case no, of beer, no, right? No, yeah. no, ah. <laughs> no, no. What's the What's the next one? That, I mean, and that's our that's our role as marketers, right? Our role as marketers is just like it's on to the next one. Um, so you know, it's not like we can like celebrate too much. Like even the, these viral campaigns, like you know, from the on the consumer side that I see, it's like, oh man, that was a great Super Bowl ad. Okay, what are you going to do next? Like you know, like it's never. Like, you know, it's not like we can live on, uh, you know, something that we've already produced. It's always like, yeah, like, what can we do better? Yeah, it's, it's always, yeah, it's always better to be done for me lately, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> it's a very short lived, uh, you know, relationship. <laughs> <laughs> well, that opens a, a great door for a, a final question, I think, you know, what's next? Uh, yeah, no, I mean, I think, you know, for us, like we're continuing to push where sales alignment. And, uh, you know, I think there's a lot of things that we can continue to grow the team. You know, my, like, you know, this organization is the smallest marketing team I've been a part of. Now, obviously, I've, I've, you know, only been the head of the department in, in this organization, but, you know, I've been uh, part of teams that were over 100 plus. Like, so, so it is really showing the value of like, okay, like, not to have heads just to have you know people in in these seats but really these people have a purpose and we need to drive these initiatives so i I, i'm hoping that you know we can continue to grow i i think you know for us like it brings us joy great joy when we're creating materials we're driving uh traffic to the website for legion for you know qualifying those leads like helping you know from a marketing standpoint we're doing anything that we can to say that hey look at our attribution report and look at how much revenue we're driving from all our digital efforts uh and so that's really you know the next chapter it's like really trying to show them that you know let us take a piece of sales that's really more marketing but it's obviously sales related and let us show you how we can even grow even more. So that's um, that's where we're, you know, trying to push and, and really get them to see an organization. So, you know, I'm truly grateful for, the, you know, the opportunities the company has given me and, and you know, for even me to triple my team, like, you know, <laughs> within the last two years. So, you know, that's, uh, so, you know, I, I'm hoping for more continued growth and not only in revenue and our production that we do, but also in, in the size of my team. That's really cool, Stephen. Thank you for sharing the story with us today. It's uh, it's been a real pleasure to chat with you. Yeah, thanks guys so much. And you know, like I said, I appreciate you guys' uh, podcast voices. It, it's impressive. <laughs> <laughs> well, we thank you for that. <laughs> yeah. Indeed. Have a great day. Okay, you too. Thanks for listening to The Cooler Ring with Carmen Perry and Jeff White. Don't miss a single manufacturing marketing insight. Subscribe now at coolapartners.com slash thecoolerring. That's K-U-L-A partners.com slash the cooler ring.